Welcome to the Paranormal Highway. Simple title, Beware. Who can you trust out there? Who can you trust? You know, we should be able to trust the government, right? In theory, we voted these people in there. So why do we all get the runaround? Why in, you know, why everything is like danced around? Uh, it, it, you know, we live in this crazy comic book world where you're really asking yourself these days, who can you trust? It's like everybody's out for money. Everybody's greed. You don't know who's real, who's not. So, you know, we're going to dive into it. I got some videos for Dr. Wu to check out, to look at, and I want to get his opinion on some of these people, um, you know, some of the government stuff, and, and try to find out wh what he feels. And the most important part of this whole thing is how do you guys feel about this world that we live in? Because to me, it's like a crazy, it's a crazy, crazy comic book world. So while I play the intro on the short of a Marine, Michael Herrera, watch the intro. And then we're going to start to show off on um, this Michael Herrera character. Is this guy for real? You know, is he a joke? I mean, I don't know anymore. I, I really, truly, truly, truly don't know. And this is why we're here. We're all here to put in our two cents and figure out, are there people we can even trust anymore? I don't know. I don't know. I'll see you guys after the highway. We were only six Marines. We again boarded uh, C-53 Super Stallions, and uh, we dropped to a hasty LZ. We got off the bird, and what we were instructed to do at that point through the briefing was to push to a high ground at least to get better observation. We trekked up about 300 meters. This time, I have a Panasonic camera. When we got to this high point, I was taking video camera, and I had actually turned to the north, which just kind of slopes down. And right there was something that stuck out like a sore thumb, especially with jungle terrain. It was something that stuck out so well. It's always going to be sleep prison in my mind for the rest of my life for 14 years. It was something that was rotating and was transitioning between colors like a light um, gray as well as a dark black. So in between, that's what it kept. It was very smooth. We had we all looked at each other as so we got online and we decided to investigate. All right, Bob, right off the bat, you know, with, with these small videos and, and, you know, we're all military, a lot of people military and, you know, we, we, we all support people who are in the military, but it doesn't mean that they're also not telling the truth or they're exaggerating. So this Michael Marine, the guy talks about seeing the spinning ship in the jungle and stuff. I mean, yeah. when, when you hear something like that, is any of that believable? Because wouldn't a word like that in the military, even though the the, the, the clothes, you know, the, they, they try to stop the the, the uh, yeah. uh, words to get out, but people in the military is going to hear things like this. How come people like yourself, myself, we net all these stories some of these uh, military people have, how come we never heard it through the grapevines in the military? Yeah, you know, everybody has a fucking cell phone, man. It's like, I'm sorry, you not carry a phone? Uh, everybody has a phone. Take a picture. Just take a picture. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can tell you a tall tale, too, Eric. Dad and I were in the Congo, and uh, we saw Bigfoots getting off a, a large. I'll draw pictures. Let me draw pictures for you. It'll be in two dimension, though. Uh, you know, my biggest joke is, okay, as a, somebody that used to, you know, I kind of know how people lie. Um, when somebody says uh, these entities, non-human entities, are coming from a two-dimensional world, I'm like, two dimensions? In a world of quantum physics, isn't that a comic book? Like, literally, isn't two dimensions on paper? Because that's where it would exist. It'd be two dimension. That means it's from a book. <laughs> the common sense man would say... I saw it in what dimensions did you see it? I saw it in three. Okay, at least we're going three dimensions, which means, okay, you're seeing an actual object. All right. Is it in what dimension? Okay, give me a physical characteristic. Tell me the what does it look like? You know, when someone starts off with two dimensions, uh, Danny Staten's in the sidebar, and he'd be like, 
are you talking about a comic book? Because that's two dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> it's right in the it's right in the words. They're not lying. They're not lying. Eric, I could tell you right now, I did it on my show last night. Eric, we have a we'll do it again. We'll just do a repeat it. Eric. I won't tell you something. I'm not lying to you. Now, this is two dimensions I'm talking about. In the two-dimensional world, I saw a spider, half man, half spider. And oh, he yeah, got, I remember you talking about that. <laughs> he got big. This, and you're like, describe this half man, half spider. Venom. Well, <laughs> venom. <laughs> you know, I can describe this. Venom. He's got multiple eyes. and I'm describing a two-dimensional being out of a comic book. Now, I'm not lying because I told you it's two dimensions. So from everything I say forward isn't a lie anymore. So you'll pass every lie detector test as long as you started off with, well, they we're talking about two-dimensional beings, and then Danny Staten's going to hold up. You mean a comic book, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but so I'm, I want to know, what dimensions is he talking about here? <laughs> the jungle? What jungle? Tell me about what do you see. It's Tell like, me. It, it, it's like you got your major skeptic. <laughs> Yeah, you got your, you got your major purse people who want to believe it so badly they're gonna jump on the bad wagon because they just wanted to believe it. Yeah, and then you got people who you know like us, like really. Yeah, everybody's got cell phones on, like you said, everybody's got <laughs> cell phones. Yeah, it's like the Travis Walton thing, and I'm like the I'm the biggest guy. I'm like, okay, so Travis, tell me the truth. Did they try to kill you? Like, did they leave you for dead? Did, were you an attempted murder? And then they freaking left. And then all of a sudden you showed up and you guys all collabed on a story that you were abducted because you don't want to arrest them for attempted murder. <laughs> you know, and like one of the guys even confessed to like, well, I, I did at one time attempt to murder him. And like, oh, well, we got some truth coming out. So there was an attempted murder other than the, 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 the abduction. Let's go into the attempted murder thing. Let's let's go around what people tell you because I could I could lie as long as it's the truth. I could lie as long as it's the truth. I mean, Eric, I joked about. Uh, do you? In I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have a non-human entity in your room today, or, or is she not there? Oh, you uh, you know what's funny? <laughs> I was gonna uh, this next video is going to show you. It's only 37 seconds, and and there's a question about the nun. Nun. <laughs> Into the ba uh, alien or whatever. Yeah. And I wanted to show you this because technically, in theory, the government, the workers of the government are the people that we vote there. So in theory, we're supposed to trust them to represent us and tell us the truth. There should be no dancing around. Here's like a 37 uh, second clip where this lady asked that Kareem Jean Perry woman who's the spokesperson for Biden. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm not saying the question is the best question in the world, but it's an it's a it's a question based on what they said at a UFO conference. But yeah. when you analyze this, when you look at the two groups, you're you're, you're sitting there like I'll just show you. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Thirty-seven much. seconds. Watch. Here we go. Let's see the audio. Good, good, Steve. Real quick, though, this whistleblower report uh, alleging that the U.S. military has been retrieving craft of non-human origin for at least several decades. Are we alone? And if we were not, would you even tell us? I would refer that question to the Department of Defense and let them answer that question for you. Go ahead. Okay. There's two things. Why I'm bringing this up now? First of all, when you look at it from afar, it seems like a whole setup because this woman, who's technically asking a question that was based off a conference, which it's just, it's a real yeah. question, yeah. But, but she starts like joking about it, you know, kind yeah. of like, like like chuckle, and then and then of course the uh, Kareen Karen woman, whatever. Can't even answer. You got to ask the Department of Defense. Like they're going to give you an answer. Well, like watch it again. Watch how they start giggling. Yeah, I mean, it's almost <laughs> like behind the scenes. They're like, "Yeah, I tell you what, you ask. I'm going to have you ask this question, even though it's silly. You're going to get popularity from this question. Everybody's going to get a giggle, and it's kind of like spitting the face back into everybody else who thinks maybe this question." Is serious. Watch, 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 watch how the people kind of start laughing. Alleging that the U.S. military has been retrieving craft of non-human origin for at least several decades. Are we alone? And if we were not, see, they start to like giggle, like, like, 
I'm so cute. I'm asking this question. Yeah. He's going to giggle. And then she, and then of course the main woman will never answer it. Uh, you're going to have to ask the def her who she Would you about. even tell us? I would refer that question to the Department of Defense and let them. Like the Department of Defense is going yeah. to answer any questions for you. Is that a setup, Fox? It's is that all like a setup. Giving her credit. It's silly. It's it's a joke. I, you know, I try to, and this is where people. I, I don't understand people. I think everybody's dumb because I'm like, let me just do some basic research that a 15 year old girl did for a freaking science project for genealogy. I'm going to put all the American presidents on one paper and see if they can connect them all back to kings of England and rulers of, 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 of Europe. Um, they're all, and I, when I say this, everybody just like all of a sudden goes into a glaze like of dumb. Did you know that all of the uh, presidents are RH negative blood types and they're all related and they all go into a blank? Huh? Yeah. They're all related. If you do basic genealogy 101, you can link them all up. Even, 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 um, um, was it Obama is related to Cheney? <laughs> you know, they're cousins and, um, they're all related. I go, they're all related. If the world at 15% of the world population is RH negative and they're all in charge, isn't there something wrong here? Like, who's really getting elected? The most, the, 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 the 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 one with the most pure RH negative blood is the one who wins. Uh, Trump is RH negative. Biden is RH negative. Uh, let's keep going back. Uh, you know, I keep going back. All the presidents. I mean, RH negative. RH, all the way back to Carter. RH negative. All the way. They're all related. And nobody's going to. When I watch the, the presidential debates, dude, I'm like seeing all these nationalities. I'm like, not one of them is going to win. Because not one of them is RH negative. The one that's RH negative, the most pure blood, is going to be the one stepping in. You have ABs. The Democrats, if you look at all their blood types, it's AB. AB. If you look at the Republicans, it's O negative. Yeah. And then, Anybody else see this? And then, and then Bob, I'm going to show you this next video. It's the same woman. And, and you know, they're, they're asking her a serious question. Yeah. In this video about Hunter Biden. Oh yeah, and, and and of course she's dancing around the question. But then another reporter is like, "Well, hold on, that's a good, you know." And it's like all the all these reporters like, "That's, I, why can't you answer that question?" It, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny to watch. It, it's kind of cool in a small yeah. way seeing them game you, up on her. And I'll tell but, you why. I'll tell you why. Well, I'll show you to it, and you can tell us why. Yeah, so this is this is the video of reporters gaining up on. That woman, I think her name is yeah. Carline, Carlene, Jean, whatever her fucking name is. Here we go. And secondly, um, the president invited his son Hunter to the state dinner last night. Um, I'm wondering if you could take us into the thinking and decision making of why uh, the president decided to. I, I'm just not going to get into family discussion, personal family discussion. As you know, Hunter is his son. I'm just not going to get well, into it. Let me ask you this: if, if Hunter Biden wasn't the president's son, would he? Have now hold on, people. I want you guys to watch this because. She's saying she's not going to get into it because it's, it's Biden's son. But technically, if you think about it, if you take away that's his son, they're asking why he's biting somebody who's being prosecuted for selling weapons, like <laughs> like like getting got arrested. So beyond son or not, it's a real good question. W watch what happens. You've invited someone who had just reached a plea agreement with federal prosecutors. Well, two days a, early. a couple of things. Again, that's his son. It's a he's a family oh. member. It is not uncommon for family members to attend uh, events at the White House. You could look at past presidents. I'm sure you have. So that is not uncommon uh, as it really. Well, I'm sure if I'm doing a, a conference and Bob went out and I don't know, murdered or, or rob a bank, if I invited him, that's all right. OK, OK, hold on. Relates to anything uh, uh, related to uh, to Hunter. I'm just not going to respond to it from here. Can I follow up on that? Okay. No, I just called in somebody. Go ahead. Yeah. So, but I mean, so Kirby wouldn't answer James's question, though. Are you going to answer the question? I mean, not a reasonable question to ask with the President of the United States who's involved, as this message seems to suggest, 
in some sort of a coercive conversation for business dealings by a son, is that something, <coughs> if he wasn't, then maybe you should tell us. So that. here's the thing, I, and I appreciate the question. I believe my colleague uh, at the White House Council uh, has answered this question already, has dealt with this, has uh, uh, made it very clear. I just don't have anything to share outside of what my colleagues have shared, uh, and so I would refer you to him and the, D and the DOJ. Just not going to comment from here. Text message I will, all, what I can tell you is I know that my colleague has dealt with this. He he uh, addressed this though at the White House Council. I just don't have anything else to share. Just I, just, I, just the I just I just answered the question. I just answered the question. Yes or no? Was the president involved in the shakedown I just attack? Stephen, I just an, Stephen, yes no? Stephen, I just answered the question. I just I said I just this is it's not up to you how I answer the question. I just answered the question by telling you my colleagues at the White House Council has dealt with this, and I would refer you to them. Go ahead. Can you just remind us what your colleague said from the White House Council so we have it? I would, I, would, I would refer you to them and they will share their statement with all of you. My question is about is your anything? statements from that podium. You've stated that the president stands by his comment from the 2020 campaign that he never once discussed his son's overseas business dealings with his son. And you stood at that podium yeah. and you reaffirmed that. Do you stand by your reaffirmation? I, what I will say is nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. And I will leave it there. Anything else, I will refer you to the White House Counsel. This is not a change? I just answered the question. You asked, You just asked me, do, does my statement change? I just told you nothing has changed. That's answering the question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Stephen. I'm calling on your colleague right now. Go ahead. Thank you. To, to follow up on my colleague, is there anything that you can say with regard to this text message and what the president's son was alleging? Was the president there or not? I would refer you to my colleagues at the White House Council. They have addressed this, and I refer you to them. See, this wow. is the problem. How can we trust anybody when they can't yeah. even answer a question? I mean, it can't. What, I mean, I don't care if it's your son or not. If your son is being charged with something dramatically and you're not technically supposed to be involved, that they're saying you are, what do you do? You're inviting him. If you're inviting him, then you should be able to answer any questions about why is this guy being being uh, going to court? Yeah. For this, going to be at a White House dinner, and almost you know it looks like. I don't know. Well, that, she well, she's that, correct. I, I I hate to say it. everyone's like, what do you mean she's cool? Well, she's correct not to answer it. She doesn't have to. Now everyone's like, okay, okay, Doctor Wu, what the fuck oh, are you right. talking she about? Have to. She doesn't the, have to. The reason why it's called maritime law, maritime law, and and Biden. Is, okay, so let me give you guys a, a quick geology thing here. Um, Washington D.C. The District of Columbia is sovereign. Number one. It's not part of the United States. Everyone's like, well, I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, no, it's Maryland. No, Maryland is part of the United States. Um, Washington, D.C. is sovereign, and so is the Vatican. It's sovereign. It's its own uh, sovereign entity, just like indigenous, uh, uh, indigenous peoples of tribes, and, and they are sovereign to their territory, like uh, the Cherokee are sovereign to their reservation. They're, Washington, D.C. is sovereign. And now Hunter Biden is sovereign. He has his own laws, his own rules. And these are like, say, say we brought in somebody from China and we're trying to prosecute. Now, that Chinese person is from China and they are sovereign to China, which means they have the laws of China, which means if they're visiting uh, America, they have diplomatic immunity. So in all reality and the maritime law, uh, Biden's son has diplomatic immunity, which means he can, in fact, smoke crack and snort lines of coke off the back of a prostitute if, in fact, it's legal in his sovereign country. True. He's sovereign. A lot of people talk about, like, uh, this person's going to jail, and, 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 and they're, I go, no, they're not. They, they are a citizen of Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, which means they have diplomatic immunity no matter where they go. And you can't ask any questions because they can't give you the answer because she's addressing America. Okay, you're talking about somebody that's sovereign to the District of Columbia. That's I can't true. talk about it. It's it's They have the maritime law status of being diplomatic immunity. It's the same thing as the Pope when he leaves the Vatican and travels around. He has, when he's in his car, in the Pope mobile, 
he is sovereign to the Vatican, which is its own entity. No matter where the Pope goes, you can't arrest him because he's in fact sovereign to his own country, which is the Vatican. Same thing with the royal family in England. In London, where the palace sits, it is sovereign to the royal family. It is not part of England. It is not part of England. There's a circle in, in London that does not belong to England. It belongs to the sovereign kingdom of the whatever is the Charles in charge, whatever. So when she's addressing it, she can legally say, I can't talk about it. He's got diplomatic immunity. I don't know. Because Americans don't understand that Washington, D.C. is sovereign. When you tell them I that, mean, they're like, I mean, technically, understand. she doesn't have to answer any type Nothing. of question. Mm -mm. But Nothing. the idea is you're supposed to be out there yeah. to be able to answer questions. She could talk about the economy. That's American. She could talk about uh, troops troops or whatever. That's American. She could talk anything American, but she, does not, she doesn't have to talk about anything if, if you have a group of people that are, have diplomatic immunity. So technically, the president is, is got he's in charge of America. However, he is sovereign to Washington, D.C. He's got his own rules. That's why you can't arrest a president. That's why that's why uh, they played this game when Trump is going in. The, uh, he said he can't legally sit in a courtroom. That's that's fake. That's for Americans to see. Uh, yeah. Trump has became a president, which means he became sovereign of Washington, D.C., He's his own citizen as part of their group. It's the same thing as people wanting to become. Eric, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, your mm -hmm. wife, me and your wife were talking about people going into the courtroom and they want to have sovereign citizenship. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, it ain't happening, dude. She gets some. Every, your wife was joking about it gets a guy every day comes in there with his paperwork. I want to have sovereign citizenship. They're like, it ain't happening. The judge is not going to give you sovereign citizenship. No. You know, it, it, no. But the funny thing is, there is paperwork for it. There is paperwork for it. You can become, it's maritime and, law. And, and, of course, you have to pay the fee to even yep. get that. And then for the, yeah. <laughs> the judge won't do it. So then you stand like, in front of the judge. It's like giving free money to them for something you're not going to get. <laughs> Hi, I want to be a sovereign citizen. That means I don't have to, I, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to use, I don't, I don't go by your rules anymore, America. I have my own rules. I'm sovereign. What does Judy Wheeler say? Washington stands on the crown land, just like our national parks and Disney World land. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I would imagine since uh, Disney, Disney, Disney World, Eric Disney Rando in uh, Florida was, in fact, the land was purchased, taken from the natives and purchased by the Central Intelligence Agency, the government, for... This is not a lie. It's not a conspiracy. This is the truth. For uh, Walt, Walt Disney, it was given. It was well. He wasn't given to him. He has to do a job. Uh, so uh, technically, yeah, the Central Intelligence Agency owns Disneyland. It's See, not a lie. The whole, the whole Disney World thing on how they got that land is a, it's a it whole crazy? show in itself. I mean, they Be they use they created like like twenty thirty corporation fake corporations to purchase this stuff so they can, they can keep it on a low price versus yeah versus they're getting the, the actual real money they should have gotten knowing yeah. the, the yeah. one big enterprise that was coming in they yeah. use like 20 baby companies to, how, how yeah. is that legal let's you and i do a show on that one just so the people understand that's what all, we're talking about with disney <laughs> that's the whole show now okay so so every time law so here's the uh Another video called um, uh, it, "It's Another Government Panel" or uh, "Just in a Hell Breaks Loose at an FBI Whistleblower Case." Oh, so, so this is like a whistleblower kind of a case, and sparks kind of fly a little bit in this one. Yeah. So, so here we go. Man in the stick. They gave us. Oh, hold on, that's the wrong one. That's hold on. That's another one. Uh, uh, me, where where is it? Why did I? Uh, Eric, that's and where, I am going to show that one, but but I want to show this one next. I also have a really cool. <laughs> remind me, I have a really cool picture of you. Uh, picture of our dad. That's our cousin found, and you got to see this picture. I got it in here. I got it saved. So remind me to show it to you on oh, camera. Oh God, I want to see it. Wait till you see this. <laughs> so guy, this is. Just in the hell, this is talking about a whistleblower in an FBI case. I yield to uh, the chair. Excuse uh, me, I Mr. Think... Chair, I think you were going to indulge 
the Congresswoman oh. from Florida and her point of inquiry. Uh, the gentlelady from Florida is recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, it's my understanding what's, that. What's, what's your, what's your, what's your, what are you, is you, are you making a point of order? No, I'm asking you a question. Or, okay. A point of inquiry. Okay. It's my understanding that the minority in this committee under the rules is entitled to the same testimony, information, documents that the majority uh, is entitled to. So, I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware that you're able to withhold information from the minority that we would new, need to use to no. prepare for a, When it comes to whistleblowers, you're not. And I would just, I would just remind the committee, remind everyone, look, Mr. when it comes Chairman, to whistleblowers, right. you are not. That's not right. It's, it's shocking that the that gentleman. That's not right. It's shocking fact, that the gentleman. You talk so much about Mr. the whistleblower Chairman, and the impeachment. It's shocking that the gentleman from New York would the state that we had. when you were part yes, of the investigation with an anonymous the whistleblower. You had. We Mr. Chairman, these individuals Mr. Chairman, I, I can't. Declared. It's just funny because none of these people know what the fuck is going on. Nah, you're not a, know what's going on. Whistleblowers have this kind of law of protection. No, but you're not a whistleblower. You're this. And it, it just, it just, it's just kind of fun to watch how everybody thinks yeah. they know exactly on what the law is. So this is kind of a funny video. Yeah. Let's check They're, it out. Yeah. I can't blowers. hear five people at once because we have regular it, order. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, it, the chair I'm, recognizes it's, I'm inquiring, and I was not. And I've told inquiring. you that when it comes to whistleblowers, you are not entitled to it. That's these at the discretion of Mr. Allen. Mr. Chairman, these he individuals said, have been determined not, not to be whistleblowers. To these are not whistleblowers. They've been determined by the agency not to be whistleblowers. Are you deciding that they're whistleblowers? Yes, the law decides. Did you not listen to Mr. Levitt's testimony? Did you not read the law? The law decides they're a whistleblower, but, but who's the, behind the law that says they're whistleblowers? I'm still confused on how yeah. somebody is considered a whistleblower. Let's hear more. The law decides that they are whistleblowers. The attorney is asserting that they are whistleblowers. The general lady from the New York has not determined. The general lady from New York has been recognized. The law has not determined they are whistleblowers. His attorney is just asserting that. General lady from New York. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have lost my voice. I'm yielding to Mr. Gates. So, so Bob. Yeah. This is what, what I'm saying is what is interesting about that is, is so the law determines you're a whistleblower. Yeah. Okay? What but, law? But the, but this is the thing is but but yeah. when they say the law determines, are they saying that a judge who's in charge of that law is determining who's a whistleblower? I mean, how does saying the word the law determines? But who's the law? Is there who's a the law? Who are they in charge of? Um, if I if I was in a Freemason, I was in a Freemasonry, and um, everybody all of a sudden you're in you're in the Free. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a scenario. So I'm in the Freemasonry, and all of a sudden everyone's like, okay, I need everyone to fill out these papers for sovereign citizenship, and everybody in that Freemasonry is now a sovereign citizen because you have judges, you have cops, you have people from all academics in the same fraternity, and you can easily get that paper passed, and you can become sovereign. So. I can sit into a courtroom, and if I have, uh, if I'm a, have diplomatic immunity to my, uh, to my, uh, to my uh, lodge, I don't have to. I'm not. A, I'm not subject to your laws. <laughs> I'm not subject to your laws. And so, whose whose laws are we talking about? I, like I who? who, who maybe, who's... <laughs> maybe Ron might know. Ron, do you, do you know of Rod what, what does he mean when he said the law determines? This guy's a whistleblower, so he's protected. Like, wh who's behind to push that? Even well, you you have to remember what's going on on oh, there. No. All right, you have one side that wants to expose something, one side doesn't want something exposed. So one's going to claim stop, try to stop it at all costs. Just like when the Democrats were trying to impeach Donald Trump. The Republicans were trying to stop everything from happening or whatever. And now when they're trying to expose Hunter Biden or whoever, the Democrats are trying to stop everything. So listening to them is the worst thing to do about whistleblowers. Because <laughs> you could go right back to the Whistleblower Protection Act and you could just find out what a whistleblower, how it's determined. You know what I mean? And listening to these knuckleheads. Forget about it. You know, that's the equivalent of a trust me, bro person. You know, I know, you know, I know somebody. They're pretty cool. So trust me, bro. They're, they're real. You know what I mean? Like that. I love that. And, and, trust and Ron, me, bro. And, and Ron, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean by the title. Like, then who you're supposed to trust the government in theory. You know, they, they're voted in by you. 
They represent yeah. you. But when you see all these videos, they fight each other, they try to cut each other off, blah, blah, blah. They're arguing. It makes you think like, well, then who can I trust out there? Okay. They just Nobody. say what they, you need to hear so they could get elected, so they could get power, <laughs> because all of them are like just, to me, the majority of them are dirt. You know what I mean? Dirt. Because you could just look at where this country is right now, and that'll tell you everything. You know, yeah, but horrible. like, but like with that stuff right there, because I was trying to fix something, but I was listening the whole time. And it's nothing. It just gives you agita because when you hear them, the, they're supposed to be not only adults, they're supposed to be the elite, you know, the right. upper ones. They're supposed to be and leaders. They're like, they're, they're worse than kids in first grade class arguing over who's getting the different chalk. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's just, it's just stupid. That's exactly you know, like, it. You nailed it, man. <laughs> like, say that one again. It was it? Trust me, bro. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true because what you hear in everything, whether it's the government or people or anything, like with whistleblowers or because they're in the military or not, just because somebody says something, because you know somebody, because yeah. they're awesome or cool, okay, you believe them. That's fine. That doesn't mean it's true. No. Doesn't mean it's false. But just because you know somebody or somebody's awesome or whatever the heck, or they're on TV or this and that, that doesn't mean anything. No. You know what I mean? Because the no. bottom line is this, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear it, but evidence is in proof, you know, and I know I go off on a tangent with that, but you know, like the old trust me, bro. Like I'm the only one that knows this or, you know, the grush type people of, um, yeah, that this they have, they have this, they have that. But I never seen any of it. I was told all this, but I'm here telling you all that. Yeah, it happened. Why? Because I know them. I know I that they would lie to me. Trust you know me, bro. I mean? Trust me, bro. Exactly. Trust me, bro. Do you have any evidence? Trust me, bro. Yeah. No. Um, it was a Spider Man. I mean, let me ask you guys this then. Okay. I saw Spider Man. So, so, we're going to go through some individual whistleblowers too in a little bit. But, but going back to the government, is it technically their fault? Because, like you said, they're children. But is it our fault? For voting in the same kind of people that belongs only to the two party system. Why can't we think? Why can't we vote outside the two party system? A million dollars. Is it our you could. Fault? you could. You could write in. You could write in Ronald McDonald if you want. But the problem, I think a start would be term limits. If we got that in place, I think that would start helping a little bit. You know, these are yeah. all people that they just, they just, it's just corrupt. It's just corrupt. That's all there is to it. And we keep voting in the corruption. So in a lot of ways, it's our own fault. And, and well, a lot of people vote people in, not on no issues. They voted in through family lines. Well, yeah. I grew up, my mother and father were a Democrat to. or a Republican. So yeah. I vote that. And I vote down the line. I have. I don't care that this person was just charged with 18 counts of bribery uh, for the last 10 years. My mom used to vote them in. So I'm going to vote too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember the common yeah. citizen, it's um, Eric found this out. We were joking about Eric's going to run for president. And it, if you want to get your name in ink on the paper ballot, it'll be one million dollars to get your name on the ballot. You could yeah, write anybody's name in, but uh, Eric, tell him one million dollars. No, technically, in the last election, I did file the paperwork. At, technically, I was running for president, but but you had to have a certain amount of money. And yeah. names to be able to have your name even yeah. printed on the ballot. Yeah, but it starts with one million dollars. Running for president, it, one and million I'm dollars. About doing it again. I'm thinking about yeah. doing it again. I, we had uh, Cali, Bob, our friend Cali voted for me. I had a few people that voted for me. Yeah, you but, know why Eric would not win statistically, even if everyone liked him. Even if the, this is true, even if the entire country is like, I'm voting for Eric, and they go to write Eric wood into the paper slot right you have to write eric eugene wood you have to write the full name out it has to be written out in ink 
black ink, black ink, all the way out, Eric Eugene Wood. Uh, the majority of Americans can't spell Eugene. And if he get his name spelt wrong, it's thrown out. Count. So because oh, Eric has a... Yep. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just, you know what I'm saying? So if everybody voted for Eric, you'd have to vote for Eric Eugene Wood. And if you misspell Eugene, then Eric is, Eric's, it's thrown out. The ballot's thrown out. <laughs> Wait, is that your name, Eric Eugene? Yeah. Is that's, anybody that's, in the cyber? Right, Eugene? That's, that's, my, middle that's my middle name. Oh, no. No, really? Yeah. Yeah. No oh. way. What a sink. What a sink that is. Wow. That's, a sink that's my middle name. <laughs> that's wow. a unique name, man. And nobody has that yeah, that's name. That's my middle name. <laughs> that's funny. Well, then you can't statistically make it to president either because they can't spell you. Somebody spell Eugene in the sidebar. Give it a give it a shot. Don't look it up. It's up to the <laughs> don't look it up. To seek out the truth, but that's literally impossible, and that's the problem too. When you're looking up the truth, it, 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 and Judy's right. It, it, it it's like all of us. Like all of us. Look, I think everybody wants the truth. There may be some skeptics out there that just like to break balls and just like want to just argue everything and whatever. Right. I, I, I think more me, I'm more of a, like, it's not a, just a see it to believe it. But when I hear stuff, I'm totally not with the trust me, bro crowd stuff like that, that this person's cool. So, you know, I believe them, you know, so therefore you should believe them, you know, mm -mm. and whistleblowers I, I I have the utmost respect for military um, and, and it's not only whistleblowers aren't only military, but I have the utmost respect for them. But just because they're military or ex-military doesn't mean that they just all tell the truth. Well, you know what I mean? Or maybe uh, they're not lying intentionally. Maybe they just misinterpreted something or heard something or this or whatever. And they're just repeating what they believe. Well, yeah. I remember you know? in, in interrogations like like if you were interrogated in the military, um, the the goal is to give them a story and make it sound real. OK, so someone's going to interrogate me. I've, I've been locked up and I said, tell me, who were you with? OK, so I have a group of friends. We hang out in a coffee shop, man. And there's a couch that we all sit on. Uh, one of them is real funny. And the other one, she's a waitress there. I'm describing a TV show. I'm describing friends. And so I could go into detail of friends if I watched all the shows. And they're going to be like, he's he's telling the truth. I am telling the truth. I watched the shows. And that's what happened in the show. I could tell you this, and it's not a lie. You understand? You could tell a two-dimensional story because it really they really did it. Even though it's performed, it still happened in real time. As in they did the cameras, whatever. You just ignore the cameras, whatever. I can give you a story of anything I want. As long as I read it and it's legit and I'm not lying because that's what's it. That's the story in my head. I saw it. I read it. I watched a movie. I could describe it. It's completely legal. And I could pass a lie detector test. These guys are all fake liars. Was King <laughs> West name on the ballot for president? I don't remember his name. Kanye West. Yeah, you could get your name on the ballot if you, I think you have to hit a certain criteria yeah, or whatever, or get yeah. a certain amount we're of... Talking about. I, of course, I didn't hit those criteria. But, but yeah. you don't need, you don't need to have that to have your name on the ballot, to have your name on the ballot, yes, but anybody could write your name in. Yep. You could write anything. You could write a coffee cup in. It doesn't yeah. matter. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. I think I think Mickey Mouse almost won the election one year. That's it was not funny a how Ron talked about military because here's another short video. So less than a minute. Uh, I'm gonna play this DC long guy, and Bob, I want you to listen to this DC long guy real quick. It's only less than a minute. Yeah, let's hear uh, what I story want you he's to got. Look at this guy and look at him and see that. <coughs> you believe this guy? Let well, me identify what he's talking so, about. Here we go. So I'm ready to okay. go, John Matt. Let me go back here. I was the first man in the stick. They gave us a 30 second sign. We're all hooked up and ready to go. Jump Master's got his arm up, getting ready to hit me in the back. And then we see shuffling. And I'm only one of 12 guys that I jump with every time. It never deviated, no change. That was my team. A guy from the back shuffles his way to the front, and it's one of the escorts. He is unmistakable. Really? You, you know. At first, it just didn't connect with me. Just gave him a hey, how you doing? Just winked at me. As soon as that John Master's arm came up and the green light's getting 
ready to go off. No sooner than it hit and I felt his arm coming down, I feel something slap me on the side of the face and it was a static line. And that man took off out of the aircraft. And when he did, it snapped my neck and it pulled me out upside down, deployed my combat gear. Long story short, at a complete oscillation and I just smacked the ground and I woke up a month later. Career's over. You think that was an assassination attempt? I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was. I was afraid. Now, also, wow. it's not it's not in this short video, Bob, but he yeah. said that that he didn't wake up for 30 days later. And, yeah. And maybe I'm wrong. Listen, if, if if the government wants to assassinate you, yeah, you're going to be assassinated. Yeah, that was Plain a good way simple. of killing someone, though. When that's, you look at that video, Bob. What do you honestly? I mean, that you meet a guy like that. Ah, uh, well, he's given all the whatever is that, uh, of telling the truth. That would be a good way to kill someone because he, he died in the service. It's easy to push it around. It's like, okay, he died in the service. It was a uh, friendly fire. Um, it was an exercise. Good way to kill someone. Yeah. I mean, it sounds legit. Now, I'm, I can't tell you because I'm watching a video. I wasn't there. Here we go with the trust me, bro. I mean, you can't <laughs> trust me, bro. I don't know the guy. But um, it sounds like an attempted murder. It's um, he, he obviously because when you jump out of a plane, it deploys for you, right? So you're you he's he's had a cord wrapped around whatever he's whatever, but his cord is deployed, so he's going down with. Now, how the hell did he live with his? Well, then again, Eric, our Uncle Johnny made it. Remember, Uncle Johnny went off a hundred foot cliff. But he said this guy went from the back to the front, so that means yeah. people were behind this guy in line. Yeah. What. If, if, if this guy did what he's supposed to do, wouldn't those soldiers behind him like aren't witnesses. you guys? You know, soldiers are buddies. You know, you're yeah. buddies. With your team. You have witnesses. Why aren't they standing up and saying, "No, this guy did try to murder him"? Nobody unless, else standing up. Unless he was the last one, and the but, killer. But he was wasn't the last behind. one. He said that, well, that he guy came witness. from behind. Yeah, and, and it, it got his way up. And officers, there's always this. Okay, you have to have an officer. You have to have an officer. Yeah. Officer deck stands there and they do daily logs. They write logs. I wrote hundreds of logs, 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 all uppercase in a drab green freaking book. That's waterproof. Open it up. You have to log everything every day. I don't care if somebody got a splinter, you got to log it because when he gets out, he needs that information to get a disability. If it gave him an infection or he broke his fingers like you had an officer logged it. When I got injured, an officer logged it. And that's how I have proof. So if that actually happened and the officer does not leave the plane, he's he's it's his job. He, he logs the daily activity. So he would have logged that this guy came from the back, wrapped a cord around his neck, pushed him out. Oh, man, he tried to kill him. Log it. Dude, military is all about procedure. And everything is over procedure. Logs. I did log after log. Anything. We have a general quarters. I had I was a log guy, so I was in the locker and I had to do the logs. That I had to write out. Okay, everything that happened during during the exercise, I have to write it for the officer. The officers there, and they've got their own stuff where they're writing. Everybody's writing shit down. There is nothing that's not written down. Have to. That's the that's military. Strict military rules are there yeah. for a reason. For there stuff is like that. For stuff like that, because now the officer should have had that written in a log that that man was almost murdered and attempted. He exactly. saw the whole thing. Now, he could sit there on a talk show and say it, but I'm like, okay, well, that's cool, man. What's the name of your officer? Well, and let's get them logs. Well, think of... Well, no, you're right, because think about this. Going back to that guy, um, Grush. That's this good. guy sat in front of Congress on, on, on national television and said... He knows somebody of somebody that was murdered because of the information they knew. Yeah. This guy said he was he knows of somebody that got murdered, and that's that. They said, Oh, really? Can you talk about it? <laughs> um, not in this setting. I can't. Are you serious? Like that? Like this guy knows somebody that got murdered, and that's it. Like they just let that go by. <laughs> it, 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 it's BS. Yeah, it's BS. And, it's not and, every situation, but like something like that. Come on, man. There, yeah. is a, there is that video of the full interview with that, but it's too long. I'm not going to play here. Yeah. It's just, you know, him talking about like 
30 days later, he wakes up. I'm like, I'm, listen, if they want you gone, you're gone. Yeah. You know, even if he survived the hit the ground, if he's in the hospital, they would get him there somehow. Like he had a heart attack or something. You well, know? it would have been logged. There would have been an officer that saw the whole thing because the officer doesn't leave. The officer stays there specifically to make sure everything goes smooth and log everything. Every Captain's log. Captain's log every day. Captain's log. That's what, that's what officers do. They spend their time and they're in the field in combat. The officer goes to a tent, opens up a thing, and logs. Even back in the Civil War, even in the American Revolution, you had the officer with the quill who writes everything out in cursive. And logs, that's what they do. So, again, with people that are going into the, the, uh, the VA for disability, okay, do you have any evidence? Yeah, the officer was there. I've got the log sheets, a copy of it. You can go through whatever is in channels and see if you can get that information and have it copied. That's how you get it. Evidence, and it's signed by an officer that was a witness to the event. Everything gotta, is logged. It's, Bob, I got, I got to tell people in the chat what you just said there because there's something that the people in the chat might not understand this is and, and, and it's the most weirdest funniest thing in the whole fucking world i'm sorry uh but um when you get an injury and you apply for the benefits what or whatever like bob and like bob and i do doctors paperwork it's all there paperwork on why you should have it cut and dry like you said bob like officer Everything's recorded. Everything. Then the person on the other side that handles your case is a 20-year-old, 23-year-old, who, who's not a doctor, who's not a nurse, who has a, probably never even been in the military, is looking at medical yeah. paper to determine what percentage you should be. I mean, yeah, isn't it just yeah. crazy? Yeah. You got somebody that's green that's looking at your paperwork saying, "Oh, I don't believe you." And even though you have all the pay all the log sheets, everything there, you know, they're they're doing budgets too. They're doing cuts. The government says we can only we can only give so much to so many people, so we're just going to use it statistically and deny you, deny you, deny you, even though you have all the evidence to support it. Some kid is sitting there, and then they have a separate room where they make another decision. Like I, I disagree with the decision that this twenty-three year old made. And then now they get a group of people that are looking at the same thing, and they're all just gonna ah, let's push it to the next one. No, push it to the next one. Let's get, let's do lunch. We've said no all day. I'm tired. You know. <laughs> so your your, your, your your medical stuff is based on a person who does not have a clue. <laughs> they yeah. just go by number, percentage is math. Yeah. Sorry, Ron, go for Check it. Check this out. So this was from that incident on 2019 off the California coast with the, um, oh, that uh, UFO swarmed the ships and everything like that. Now, not to get into that story, but if you see below, that is like oh, a deck log. And they, like yeah, what, yeah. what Robert's talking about, like they logged everything. And look at you can look everything. at the times. They could go from the second. You know, and that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. So, like with All stuff like cases. that, especially when somebody's claiming that they were assass uh, going to be assassinated or attempted assassination, and there's not like nothing. You know, yeah, no. It's, it's if a, you're on a I, cutter, I want to show and, you and, like they do document a yeah. lot. Yeah. yeah, if you're on a cutter and you're you got the night watch, anything you see, anything out of the ordinary, it Everything. doesn't matter. You have to document it. You're yeah. not allowed. To tell anybody what you saw, the only person you could do that is the person in charge, like Bob said, like that officer, and everything yeah. has to be chain documented. Of you just Run cannot go command. out and say whatever. Yeah, I saw and five lights. You can't do before that. I before I close this image, just want to make sure. Check that out. Yeah, that's this it. is from them. See what it says right here. That's how they document it, but other people just. Other people decided to go on TV and say otherworldly craft they, they said were there. No, Snoopy this is team. what they wrote at the time. Drones. Yeah, I was on Snoopy Team. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. That's so funny. I was on Snoopy Team. That's funny you put funny? that up there. Yeah, Snoopy Team. Yeah, Snoopy Team away. Yeah. Uh, we have an unidentified... We have an unidentified... So, Snoopy Team, this is what happens. 
you've got a stack of freaking books and you got like two or three guys and they're out there and people are checking weather they're doing everything and you you're flipping these this you have a book you open it up it's got plastic so and you got pictures it's like black and white silhouette pictures because you're not able to see it clear like you just not gonna have a picture of a ship you gotta have it's a black and white silhouette picture so when you're looking with your binos and you're comparing it to what it can the silhouette because that's all you can see is a kind of a silhouette and you're flipping pages now the same thing with an aerial phenomenon you got something coming in and you got books and you're flipping pages. Oh man, it's this one. And so you're writing down. Okay. So it's that one. And this is your best guess. And another guy is doing the same thing and he's writing down what he thinks it is with the flipping the pages with the silhouette pictures of what you're seeing. It's an unidentified and he writes it down. So then you give it to the person in charge. They look at it and they go, Oh, so it looks like all of you think it's this silhouette. So we think it's this thing. And so it goes down into uh, the intelligence. It goes around the ship of what they think it is based off the Snoopy team's observation. And uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. you even have video of the Snoopy. Uh, matter of fact, when Jeremy, and, and I didn't mean to throw this off. Like, I hope it's not totally off no. topic. But no, like it's, when it's, Jeremy Dorbell, it's relevant. Topic, this is he, real. <laughs> Yeah, where he leaked those videos of the stuff. Remember with the so-called Green Pyramid and all that stuff? Yeah. Um, that was all, like, from... And a matter of fact, that's the one that I showed you that I foiled to see if they investigated it. And that's the one that where they got the deck logs. You had, like, five, six ships that were involved in that exercise they all have their own individual deck logs and they almost yeah. all look the same. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it, it, again, he's like the king that Jeremy doorbell, he's like the king of, uh, trust me, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's the king of that. You know, oh, yes. and, it's like, what is well, Snoopy say? Funny that he said <laughs> Jeremy Corbell, because I think I got one here of him. Let's see. One fifteen. Element 115 is a, a super heavy element. It's something that we've only, only just recently synthesized. We only made four atoms of it. But um, the craft uses larger quantities of it, 223 gram little triangles of it. But it's a unique element. When it's exposed to radiation, it produces its own gravitational field, its own anti-gravitational field. And it's what's used to lift and propel the craft and create distortions around it. It's a... It's an amazing material, and it's certainly nothing that occurs here or naturally. And it can be weaponized, and that's kind of the issue here. If this story is oh, all God. true, that can be weaponized. Absolutely. Wow. Never miss a now, beat. Oh now, Bob, when you see that, Bob, when you see that, what do you, I'm seriously, what do you think when you see somebody talk about uh, the machinery could be weaponized? Oh. What, 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 what goes through your mind, Bob? What does Dr. Wu think of that? Well, they're full of shit. Uh, I can just tell you right now, that's all fake. I, I, I you know, I, that guy, again, I, we made a joke before. He looks like, I mean, what's his name? The guy with the beard looks like he owns a Turkish bathhouse, man. I just, yeah, I just, oh, the guy looks like he just smells like axe spray all over him. Ah, like man stank with axe spray. Anyway. I don't believe that man at all. He's a freaking, he's an actor. He's a professional. So if I go into a ring with a professional WWF wrestler, is it, we wrestle, is it real or is it entertainment? It's, you know, we could fake it or whatever. And that guy's fake. He's, he's an, uh, he is. He said already that is fake and it's been proven fake. And then he just moves on to the next thing and yeah. everybody goes, Oh, he, he's legit. I spoke to him. He, he's so, he, you know, he keeps it real. I, so he's just now, take, he's a, he's a director, actor, entertainer. Well, this is perfect. Cause Bob, <laughs> I want you to see this next one. And this next one is actually a news coverage of that UFO panel that I've never got your opinion on it. Oh, you're going to cool. see the three people that talk, but behind them, you see, you'll see that Jeremy Corbell, like yeah. being a cheerleader <laughs> for them. And I want to get your thoughts on, on this panel and this short video. So like no, I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen it, but I got a dollar bet that he's wearing skinny jeans. 
Well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll okay, tell with the we video. Go. Let's see. Let's yeah. see. He held a historic hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena, also known as UFOs. Lawmakers heard from three witnesses today, including former U.S. military and intelligence community personnel who claim to have come into contact with such objects. Natalie Brand has more now from that hearing. We have nothing close to it. Retired Navy Commander David Fravor testified before Congress about an encounter he cannot explain, a strange tic-tac-shaped object he says he saw in the sky during a training mission in 2004. The technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are digging into the national security concerns and the mystery posed by unidentified anomalous phenomena, or UAPs, also known as UFOs. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. <laughs> I know the exact locations. A whistleblower who formerly worked on the Defense Department's UAP task force, David Grush, claims he was denied access to information on a government UFO crash retrieval program, something the Pentagon disputes. Biologics came with some of these recoveries. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Get lobotomized. Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to. Congress <laughs> members from both sides of the aisle are demanding more transparency. Oh, Bob, I never, oh, I don't man. know if you actually watched the whole panel or not, but uh, maybe if you have. What's yeah. your opinion on that whole thing about th those three people? And Jeremy well, Corbell in the back, like with that serious face, like, you're doing good, buddy. Well, they're not lying. And again, when it comes back to what he, I, I, I use this as a joke, but it's the truth. When they said, when he tried to explain to them what it is that he is a privy for the information of, he starts off by saying, now it's got to be in there somewhere. I, I remember, unless it's disappeared at Mandela effect the way he said, it's a, t they're two dimensional. And we're talking about a two dimensional concept, da, 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 interdimensional two, da, da, da. two dimensions is paper. It's a picture. It's two dimension is not three dimension. It's so to start a conversation with that means I'm giving you a two dimensional idea of what these things, non human entities, are. Well, he said he was told this. He never said he saw yeah. anything. He was told about them. So if I, I use Danny Staten as an idea, so Danny Staten tells me, um, I I'm going to tell you about these two dimensional beings that I know about. One of them has. Uh, eyes in front and multiple eyes on the side and he's a half human half spider now i'm thinking you're talking about spider-man right or, or you're talking about uh, uh uh what's his name the other one the black one um you keep saying it venom. the other venom you're talking about venom right and he goes yeah you've seen venom he goes yes they're in a two-dimensional like two-dimensional means a picture or a paper or whatever so if i start a conversation with that then i can tell you anything i ever read in any book that's a direct, that is the truth. So he would, Danny State would not be lying technically. He's talking about a comic book. He's talking about two dimensions. So after he mentions that it's all two dimensional, uh, interdimensional, two dimensional, whatever, then he continues with the non human entities, da, 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 da. And I go, oh, so he's describing something out of a book. He's talking about something on paper or something that he's reading. It's, I see your point, gave you the answer. Because technically, Bob, it. technically, if I go to Ron, yeah, go, hey Ron, yeah, Bob at the Smithsonian, he carried a dead alien body from the Roswell crash into room 68. Yeah. So if Ron goes on a panel and says, I was brought to my attention <laughs> that a certain Why person right? brought a body, alien body from Roswell to room 69, which technically Ron's not lying. He yeah. heard it from somebody, he's not. Lie. He, he, I did. Lie detector test. I did. Lying. I told you all about it. I was in a room and I had to add alcohol to these jars that have water in it and it preserves the non human entities inside these jars. And they had it's huge room, like it's like a football field, kind of a filled with non human entities in jars. I had to add alcohol to. So if I'm in a if I'm in a conversation, if I'm in court, or like, did you in fact see non-human entities in jars? Yes, I did. On my life. And my children, on my children's children. Yes. What did you do? I added alcohol to the jars. I checked them with a the buoyancy. It bounces and it sinks up, sinking too low. So I need to I have a big and I pump the pump the alcohol into the jar. I have a big 
thing. I worked at Smithsonian and I had a pump and an alcohol. I watched the buoyancy of it. Okay, now it's got just enough alcohol to preserve these non-human entities in these jars. And I put it on the shelf and I keep saying this and everyone's thinking aliens, aliens. This fucking dude worked with aliens. I said, I didn't say aliens. I said non-human entities. And, and the best part about this is Technically, Ron is protected by whistleblower law. Did not even mention He's protected your by name what... that you said all that. Yeah. So, so he gets all the publicity. Yeah. So and I was pre preserving like... fish. I worked in the vertebrates. I worked with vertebrates. So these are fish in, of all the aquatics, whatever's in waters that I've added. And some of them are octopus. And not some of those octopus are identified as now uh, non, uh, non earth, non terrestrial. They are, they're thought by scientists to be extraterrestrial. So if I went to Eric and I said, dude, I just had a, I just saw, a, 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 according to science, a, a, an inner terrestrial in a jar. I had to add alcohol to it. It's freaking crazy. Now, Eric's like, that's crazy. And he goes to Ron and says, Ron, my brother worked on a freaking, um, it, it's not a, it's not a terrestrial. It's an inner terrestrial. And Ron's like, what the fuck? And he goes to Congress and he's like, I heard through the grapevine. Uh, Eric, and then uh, that's um, somebody is working in a room with non human entities, man. And it's and one Eric of them. also mentioned that somebody got murdered, and so now I repeat that, and it's just all bullshit. That's it's it. All bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's 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 the remember we joked about it. It's like it's like Ron is on the okay, Ron. I want you to go stand at the end of that line of a hundred people. And then I say to the first guy, Eric, I like green eggs in ham. Pass it along. And Eric says it all the way down. Next thing you know, Ron walks up and says, I heard you like biscuits and gravy. What? That's <laughs> what biscuits happened. and gravy. Yeah. But, but, what the thing is, but the thing is this. It also comes down to where how this BS gets spread is because, like, I know Eric Right, I consider Eric a good friend, same as you, Robert. Right now, because of that, right now, what? Because I don't want to offend Eric, but if, when Eric tells me that, I think he's off his rocker and I don't believe him. But because he's my friend and yeah. I don't want to separate it, I go along with it mm -hmm. and now just repeat it. Act like if I believe what he said, because yeah. I don't want to offend him. That's sure. a big problem out there, too, is that nobody calls crap out because they don't want to offend the next person or you're labeled a troll or this or that. You know what I mean? Absolutely no. true. Now, is there a faker of saying too much that's on your side? Like 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 saying all the right things, like, like too much. What I'm talking about Perfect is stuff. you show you just start video of Russell Brand and I'm not saying he's that's wrong, a sign right, of a lie but but let's listen how he sounds like he really truly is 100% fighting for you let's check this out listen Wait, do you think you can improve speak. America I by determinedly be and avowedly condemning Fox News without acknowledging that you're participating in the same game I... did you not just listen to someone who plainly legitimately believes in this country and believes it's possible to change but is bound by corruption is bound by the lobbying system surely it's clear to you Bill as one of the great pundits and experts and comic voices that systemic change is required money has to be taken out of politics we need new political systems that genuinely represent ordinary americans so that we can overcome cultural differences and bickering about which <laughs> propagandist network good. is the worst it's is not going to save a single american life not improve the life of a single american child not going to improve america's standing in the world and the world needs a strong america i'll tell you that i'll tell you that so you have an obligation a duty I mean, this guy, this. He's a great actor. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, 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 listen, he might be really believe in his own. Listen, Bob, you and I have a friend. Yeah. I'm not gonna say his name. Starts with a D, ends with an R. Who is that kind of a person that? Oh yeah. Knows how to talk. He he knows how to make. He's a wordsmith, look right? Like he's the smartest person alive. He's but a wordsmith. Behind the scenes, you know, and I know that he has. Some issues. A lot of them. People, a lot of them. A where, lot of them. Where Russell Brand now <laughs> is coming out where he's 
technically you're being charged with some same kind um, of shit. You want know to you know what I'm talking about? Is there well, like he reminds me of a he reminds me of a junkie that bought a thesaurus. Like I owned a thesaurus in college. I'm I, I I had to be a wordsmith when it comes to writing things down and saying things. I had to have you know you could just say I could just tell you I could give a speech, but I it's it's better if I take a word and find it in a thesaurus and use it, and make a bigger word out of it. I want five dollar words. So Russell Brand reminds me of some junkie that bought a thesaurus and sits in his room and freaking it exchanges uh, regular words for thesaurus words that are sounding fancier. You know, I like the guy that. salad that comes out of his mouth. Word salad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Okay. Too. I got one last video. <laughs> Word one salad. last video. And I want to get your opinion because this is Russell Brand again. Trust me, bro. But, okay, but Bob, this one, one last video. But this is Russell Brand with Joe Rogan. I want you, I want to get your opinion with Joe Rogan and yeah. this guy together. Let's see. Never change shit. But they, they do things to get people to self censor. Of course. And, Rumble doesn't do that. It was what well, yeah, exactly. What was difficult for us when we were when YouTube was our primary platform is something we would look at your content. All right, that's the title of this Rogan video. On um, this is the content. Okay, well we can try that, and then we would get demonetized, and it yeah. becomes like a weird algebra. You change this word, mm -hmm. you change that word. You have to order it. You have there's certain things you just you know that you can't say. And you still get some money from like YouTube Red. Yeah, right? you still get, but it was like th they were doing things, and. I mean, I, they're running a business. I understand it from their perspective. Of course. You know, they're running a business. They have advertisers. I understand it from their perspective. But from a content creation perspective, you just couldn't trust them. This is what uh, Rumble were fundamentally offered. They gave me a good deal and the assurance that... The assurance. What, what, why I'm bringing this up is, okay, so first of all, right now, what he's talking about is not trusting YouTube. I hope yeah. YouTube's going to hear it. They're going to shut me down. But he's trusting Rumble. And he actually made a side deal with Rumble, so it's like it's like YouTube. Don't is, is, is YouTube really the evil? Is it him? No, is they're fine. Evil? YouTube huh? does censor people. Oh, I mean, got, people that's, that's true. That's absolutely yeah. true. When yeah. we just went through that two years ago, if you if you said the word of what you had to put on your face, you were already getting notes on your account. People getting thrown offline, even doctors. Yeah, like that. I yeah, mean, I'm shadow banned. So uh, Eric's sh we're shadow banned. That means yeah. we can't go up a certain level anymore. I, I, they've stopped my, my. Um, I made a joke about it, and I, how do you like see? How, I, I'm speaking from experience because I had 666 subs for several weeks, and I'm like, and I had friends, and it was a joke. I'm like, I got six, I got six, 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 and I had friends. I'm calling up, hey, unsub me. All right, I'm unsubbing you now. Six, six, six. Okay, uh, people, uns all of my people, unsub me and then resub me later as an experiment. 666. For weeks, I was a 666. I'm like, what are they doing? I even try to get a hold of uh, no. uh, YouTube. Oh. And like, why am I on 666 Bob, the whole time? <laughs> I got to bring this up to you because Ron already knows this. Like, like you know, I actually straight up and asked um, <laughs> YouTube about the shadow ban. And, and I showed Ron. They sent me this long-ass email percentages analytics and i'm not saying they're wrong on it but yeah. they say that there is no sh uh such sh sh thing as shadow band that's basically made up by the people yeah yeah well i can just tell you right now that you can't have a same number like you and i we've done shows on here as part of my anthropological ex uh, experience eric and i have how many how many subs we have here now What's the sub here? Uh, 16.5. 16.5. Yeah, that's over five years. Yeah, over five years. And I have my own channel. And most people come over to see me, even if they don't stay very long. You're going to sub me from this channel. And I would, I would, and now I, I barely got one sub at, within the last several months. And even people have put, like, Danny Staten puts my shit in the sidebar, puts my fucking thing. People, I've subbed you, man. Yours didn't go up. I said, I know it didn't go up. It don't go up. It don't go up. It just stays locked. Now, I can tell you from observational science that the fact that I'm not going up, even though there's 16,000 here, they can go over to my site and just, 16,000 here can just go over to Ron's site and just give him a couple subs. He should be going up 500 at the minimum. Nothing. One, you can two, do what a lot of people do. A lot of people get mad that they're stuck at a number, so they just go and buy, buy them. It. They buy the subs. Yeah. They go out and buy them from India. <laughs> they get the Indians. I looked God. into that too. I was like, 
India, they have this whole thing in India where they could have all these people that do nothing but just do internet. They buy subs. They, they themselves go on and sub. They send out the word on the. Get me started on that crap, man. <laughs> They pick up the phone. Hey, I need you to sub these people. You've got uh, 500 things to sub today. Okay, no problem. How much do I make? Okay, sub, 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 sub. That's the whole point of the whole show today. Then who can you trust out there? I mean, what? I mean, I'm, you know, who can you trust? Nobody. Is it? Is it? Is it nobody? Yeah, it's nobody. It's nobody. It's hard to trust, but you have to. You have to, it's mandatory. You have to be able to think for yourself. Yeah. There's too many people that are, are led that I always say call sheep, but like that, that, again, you have to put your thinking cap on and, and put like personal friendships and all that crap, put that on the side and try to just look. Like you don't have to be nasty about something to offend somebody, but usually the people that are BSers are uh, get really offended when you don't agree with them. Oh, absolutely, that's the reaction they Those get. Yeah, the ones you know, yeah, you'll you'll get banned or <laughs> labeled a troll or anything when you don't agree <laughs> with them, and they get readiered and all that. Those liars get mad. That, you know they're BSers. Yeah, liars get mad <laughs> fast. <laughs> Because you called out their BS. Like, I, I've met people that I'm like, I'm look, dude, um, you're pissing on my leg, man, and it's not raining. No, it is raining. No, you're pissing on my leg, man. I know you're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, no, uh, it's just, no, I'm just saying, it's just not like us. Like, here's Sasquatch America. He wrote, my views went from 10,000 per video to 130. After I made a funny Bigfoot mask video. Uh, I mean, honestly, how is that possible? Where did 9,900 people just all of a sudden disappear? Go? They just disappeared? Yeah. He said he averaged that on a video. So it wasn't like he had one viral video. Yeah. You can, you can have a viral video. But then you go back to normal. It always yeah. happens. Well, but I do... All my lives are experiments, and I'm, I've got, like, some days I'll, I, I'll be doing a show, and now I'm counting. I'm doing my thing. Nobody knows what I'm doing. I'm just getting wild. But I'm counting. And there is, like, say, 20 people, different different things, different identified 20 different people. Now, I look at my, I look at my view number. It's got five. I got five people watching. I've just, I, I can look over the sidebar and see more than five. Just in a sidebar right there. There's... Think about this. <laughs> think of, no, no, but that's true. Because think about this. Like I'm looking at what Squatch America said. You remember I had put this video, I don't know, during the midst of that whole BS they pulled on us, right? Yeah. And I had the this alien mask. I had the V for Vendetta one. Now, it, oh. I, what I was doing had nothing to do with any kind of illness or nothing it, had, it was just a totally to do with um extraterrestrials and i had about four or five masks so i was doing this video it got labeled as misinformation and they pulled it down because i had different masks on <laughs> like that. and because um when i was talking about it saying yeah and this mask just because of that key word then that they put in their machine nope I don't care what it's about. If you say that word, mess, it's getting labeled, and you put yeah. a note on your thing, and they took my video down. Yeah, because, well, and and it was absolutely nothing to do with anything that was medical or nothing like that. It was just wow. goofing around. There's an algorithm. Um, um, a lot of these, a lot of these social media things are ha they got AI. That's that's not a joke. That's not a conspiracy. There's an AI that can write your papers. Can do a AI is they're using all these corporations are using AI to write all this information on the web. Everything because I, I look at it, I go, this is not written well. They started the sentence with no, this is an AI I wrote it out, and um, I've used certain words to trigger the AI to see if I get banned or if I get um, a copyright. I play specific songs to see where I get copyrighted. Um, there's an AI algorithm, and certain words trigger the AI. 
And once you get it triggered, because I got I got uh, strike. I, that last one was a big strike, and they sent me an option to. I wrote out what I do, and I'm an anthrop. I do this and that. I help people get out, you know, blah, blah blah. And they said, "Oh, we apologize. We went through your video, and there was nothing wrong with it. We laugh. Yeah, they told but me they, it was humor, and they put me back on. Yeah, but they have. You have to remember the the vocabulary is changing every other day, and everything so. Now it's about what offends people. Yeah. So my um, S22 Ultra, by me talking about that, may offend the people that have the S23 Ultra right now. So by saying that S22 Ultra yep. now, that could be one of those words that now they don't push your video out because I said yep. S22 Ultra. And now it's things that they label that are offensive. Yeah. They want to keep it as a safe community for the viewers so, like, the dumbest crap that now that offends everybody, now when you say words, you can't. You have to talk, like, in shorthand. We have to talk like idiots. We have to say <laughs> LOL, OMG, and, you know, CDD, and all that. We can't even talk anymore because yeah. everybody's offended, so everything yeah. bans you. Well, you've watched my videos. I hide everything in, in saturated <laughs> satire. I can't give, I can't whistle blow without having a satire. I got to say something and then drink a beer and smoke a bong and then, and then say something and then change the sentence. To, I have to constantly play within the algorithms to throw it off. And so far, I, I've got no strikes. I've got no <laughs> nothing. And I'm like, it's working. It's now, working. Now, the dog man wrote, yes, I don't do YouTube for views. I do to help others. And, and none of us technically do for views, but I think the biggest problem is if you say something wrong, no, people who do like you, they don't even know you're coming on. You know, they don't even get notifications That's, no more. No that notifications. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, it's not about not the that views. We're trying to get more views. We want the people who do like us to get those it, notifications because no notifications. So many people notification starts stops to go out for whatever reasons or technically you get unsubbed from the person you like somehow oh yeah. i've gotten that it's, many times i've gotten it's unsubbed not about the sub it's not it's not about wait it's i'm sorry it's not about the views i mean of course there's a lot of work that goes into doing this stuff depending on how much you put into it so yeah you would like to see your work result, what happens there. But it's not that. If you're looking to just share stuff with people and teach people, educate people, you can't if they're not recommending you. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's what happens here. Like there's people that are shadow banned, but this community in a lot, we've, I always said this for years now that we're put in a corner, but any little words, I even told Eric recently, like I told people in the past, Every people would like make stupid little snide comments because I said on my channel, I don't want cursing no more. No, I'm not above anybody. I curse just like the next person. Yeah. But just because you're allowed to do it here doesn't mean you should. And the algorithm picks that up. They oh, come it does. down on that. And you don't get pushed out a lot more because of the curses. That's right. You know that's what I mean? True. So that's just a fact. Yeah. Sure. So, and it's got now, there are people out there that that's all they're about views and and stuff because you could i'll give you a little hint when you watch people this is all you got to watch right when when you look at put me on big eric for a minute you got go it. it go for it this is this is what you got to watch for okay this is some inside baseball and even though i'm saying this right they won't be able to help themselves so you'll know because when they're looking at the camera Right up in the corner, it always shows you how many people are watching right now, and you'll yeah. see this. <laughs> Every few minutes, and the least amount of people, the redder the ears get. You know what I mean? And you'll see that. That's that, when you see that, then you know that's people that are in it for just views. Yeah, yeah. And, and Bob, oh, Ron is. I don't even look at because Ron was telling me, "Hey, look at this one." Look at look at it at 5.0 minutes and watch the person kind of changing the attitude when the views kind of go away a little bit here. Yeah. And then you see it. He, he's right. You see it. it, it they yeah. They get angry. And yeah, I don't even person, talk to the I sidebar. Have to shut down their show early because everybody, a lot of people left. 
I just put out information. I don't even like Ron even knows he don't talk to the sidebar. <laughs> I go, I don't even know how many people are in. I because the number is wrong and I don't care. And and so I'll answer a few questions and I'll go off on my own because I don't know. It's all it's all it, it, the algorithms got me locked into something and I'm oh, like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, your brother the other day, Eric, he called me a cuck. A right? cuck, yes, he a cuck. He said I was a cuck and a hacker that I hacked you, but he said, <laughs> he said Ron, don't be a cuck. Like, don't be a cuck, man. Don't be a cuck. That was a joke, by the way. You know it was a joke. Know, you were probably know, laughing your ass off. Don't be a cuck. As I was telling him, me and Ron hacked you, man. We kicked you out, and then I got that one little thing there. It was stuck up there for a long time that you and uh, 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 Danny Staten look at tran porn, and it was there for a long time, and everyone's laughing. <laughs> you know, like, I... You must have hacked him. Yeah, me and Ron hacked you. That was funny, don't be a man. cuck, man. Admit it. That was so funny. Don't stand behind and just be a watcher. Admit that we hacked him. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? I didn't hack nobody. How would you uh, uh, answer the final when if I say, well, the moral to this show today is what? What's the moral? You still can't trust people. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I, my biggest joke is, you know, if you guys watched the, the, the Great Escape and uh, the American, I forget his name, he throws the baseball against the face. He's in a, they're all in a Nazi camp. The Great Escape, they're all in a Nazi camp. And he, he has the baseball and he throws it against the fence and then walks out there and everyone's got the machine guns on him. He's like, I'm sorry, I just wanted to get my, just wanted to grab the baseball. I, it rolled past the line. And I was, I'm always testing, testing the fence. I want to see how many, how many, <laughs> like oh <laughs> say the word and see what how many people get banned i didn't get banned for saying cuck <laughs> no, it's you just got I, banned. I, I, I threw okay. the baseball against the fence and then and ron knows he's just throwing a baseball against the fence he wants to say a couple of words and he's going to use me as the fucking the the conversation and see how many if he gets banned or what, what's going to happen or if i get in trouble or whatever oh yeah well just to let yeah. people know we're going to end the show here in a second Bob is actually going to the mountains tomorrow. There's yeah. gonna him with beer grease. They're yeah. gonna be looking for some uh, Bigfoot out there. No, I, I don't like Bigfoot. They're a dime a dozen. Um, I'm looking for Otter Man. Otter Man. Yeah, I'm Bob an Otter Man guy. For Otter Man out in the woods yeah. tomorrow. It's a lot harder because you can. He doesn't have the big feet, so you got to look real hard, and they're small. So Otter so Man I'm is guessing out because there because you're in the mountains, and where you go, there's no internet. You're not gonna be doing no show this weekend. Uh, I'll try. Um, there is, uh, as Ron will explain to you, a lot of um, Elon up there. So um, if I can get an Elon uh, satellite uh, internet, I can try. We'll see. Um, Starlink. There seems to be billions of them up there. I don't know how they're getting up there. Can't figure out how the every day it is like Ron pulled up that one stat one day and he's like, they, they, they just put out more. And I'm like, how? Yeah, they're looking to launch another 100 before the end of the year. Yeah. Damn. They're launching 22 satellites every three days. Well, Ron, what do you got coming Ow. up? <laughs> um, to be honest with you, I, I still haven't. I'll probably be doing a show tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I haven't put the thumbnail up yet because I'm not too sure which one I want to do it on yet. Uh, I may just just go with a freestyle and just pull up all the stuff right. that I've been looking into and just do one of those open ones. Those are fun, you know. Because uh, because talk about that on Tuesday. Tuesday's Halloween. Of course, Monday I'll have a normal show, but Tuesday is going to be kind of a open panel for people to come up and talk about their favorite horror movies because it's Halloween day. You know, I just want to hear people what are, you know. I want I want on Tuesday for all of us to create our own list top 10 horror movies for this channel or whatever like what is our top 10 horror movies so that's tuesday just to have fun and just talk about and maybe vote on some of our movies what makes our list i still got that picture i want to show you with dad wait all right let's see show this. it wait give me the whole screen wait till you see this now, first of all before i do that what's the story behind this picture in the in the first place okay so um all of these individuals in this is our relatives and they're deceased uh mike's in it Uncle Johnny, and um, I think I I uh, I, I, I it's not Aunt Mary. Anyway, I'll let you look. It's Aunt Karen. Yeah, it's Aunt Karen. And wait till you see Dad. Dad is glowing like a like an angel. And I'm like, well, how did this happen? 
So anyway, it's even got the Bronco and all this stuff. So here we go. You'll see dad glowing. Yeah, that's Unc that's Aunt Karen. Yeah. Uh, Michael Aunt right there. Mike. Yeah. There's and the look, Bronco. And look at dad. Um, Bronco. Yeah, he's got a bright light right in front of him. Now, you that's and I nice. experienced his funeral and that massive rainstorm came down on top of us on a clear blue warm day and it stormed for like 10 minutes straight, like flooded everything and then completely cleared up. All the clouds were gone. Remember that? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, dad. yeah. Look at dad. He's glowing. And we pulled it out. I said, how is that even done? <laughs> Looks like a UFO beaming him up. Yeah. yeah. That thing like that. Yeah. I was like, Look at that. And, I, and I know Bob's That's talking weird. about uh, that funeral did. It was raining, and when we get there, it stopped. And and of course, they they screwed up the dates. We didn't get to have the whole military oh. ceremony. And then where uh where he's in the wall, a light came down, like just bright, like right. It was like kind of weird. It was like it was meant to be. Yeah, and he died on uh, uh not Veterans Memorial Day. Day, Memorial Day, like <laughs> the exact Memorial Day. And uh, the funeral, and then that freaking crazy. Every everybody had to pull over. Everybody on the streets had to pull over because the rain was pounding down on the vehicle. Like what the hell? But I saw that. And I was like, "That's freaky, man." Dad's glowing. <laughs> then and then you would think oh, with rain the cars would go off. It didn't. And when when it didn't rain, the cars went off, and we all got in the car. Then it started raining. <laughs> yeah, so crazy. That's just a. Yeah, you I thought you'd like to take that with a grain of salt. But beyond that, I want to appreciate Ron for coming up here. I actually uh text him like 10 minutes for the show, like real late notice. I'm like, hey Ron, I was so busy this week, I didn't really get to have a chance to really text people. And I actually called Bob on the phone. Hey Bob, he I'm, me, yeah. I'm yeah, not he gonna be able like... to send you the invite until like get home. Like like 8 45. So don't think I forgot. No. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah, I was like, Yeah, no problem, Eric. I was like, no problem. So I'm still getting that, ready anyway. Guys, I want to thank everybody coming here. And the moral to the story is still don't trust anybody. No. Watch your back. You never know. Beyond that, we'll see you guys next time. Smarter than the situation. Don't do what I did. Don't wait till the bombs are actually falling or thousands more have died before you do what I wish I'd done years earlier in 64 or even 61 on the nuclear issue, and that is reveal the truth that you know, the dangerous truths uh, that are being withheld by the government at whatever cost to yourself, whatever risk that may take. Consider doing that because a war's worth of lives may be at stake. Or in the case of the two existential crises I'm talking about, the future of humanity is at stake.